for this segment. We want to verify basic properties of normal distributions. Recall, a normal distribution has probability density function of the form f of x equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi times sigma times the function e to the minus x minus b squared over 2 sigma squared. Here, x is our variable, mu and sigma are constants. We'll see that mu is the mean, sigma, which is positive, will be our standard deviation. Now, if we sketch the graph of our probability density function, we'll get a bell curve as so. Three things we want to show about f of x. First, that this is a probability density function. So from the graph, we see that it's positive everywhere. We want to show that the integral over the real line is equal to 1. Next, we want to show that the mean for this distribution is equal to mu. Finally, we'd want to show that the variance is equal to sigma squared. So our standard deviation is sigma. First, we verify that f of x is a probability density function. Since we have the graph of f of x, we know that it's positive everywhere. So we need only show that the integral of f of x over the real line is equal to 1. Now, to show this, we need to make the assumption that the integral of e to the minus x squared over the real line is equal to square root of pi. Now, if you just want to believe this, you can go to your computer, compute a Riemann sum over some large range of real numbers, and then you'll see that it approximates square root of pi. If you want to see this exactly, we need multivariable calculus, and there's a video for that. Now, with this, we calculate, so we have our integral, we put in for f of x, so I can bring out the constant. Then to integrate this, I'm gonna do a change of variable. So we're gonna let y be equal to x minus mu over square root of two sigma. So I'm just gonna take the square root of the term in the exponent when we drop the minus sign. Now, dy is equal to dx over square root of two sigma, dx equals square root of two sigma dy, and we substitute. So we wind up with, okay, in the integrand, I have e to the minus y squared, square root of two times sigma times dy. Pull out the square root of two, pull out the sigma. Then I'm left with our integral here with a y instead of an x. So we get a square root of pi. And then you note, everything cancels out to leave us with a one. So step one is verified. Next, we show that the mean of our distribution is equal to mu. So we take our density function, multiply by x, then we integrate over the real line. Because x times f of x has both positive and negative values, we'll have to worry about whether this integral converges or not. If we put in for f of x, then I substitute y equals x minus mu. So dy equals dx, and x equals y plus mu. We substitute, then we note, okay, our substitution to go to y. Well, here we're just taking the graph of our density function, removing mu to zero. So we're just shifting the graph over. That means the area under the graph doesn't change, it's still equal to one, which means one over square root of two pi times sigma times e to the minus y squared over two sigma squared it's so a probability density function in y. So if I integrate the part in the integrand, which has the mu, that's just going to go to mu. That leaves us with this integral here. And now I note what's in the integrand is an odd function. Okay, if I replace y with minus y, we multiply by a minus 1. So in theory, this integral should go to 0. The only problem is, we may wind up integrating over regions with infinite or negative infinite area. So if I want this to go to zero, I want to break up the region and show that if I integrate over the part that's greater than zero, the part that's less than zero, these regions have finite area. And then that takes care of the worry here. Now, to show that each of these has finite area, 
Okay, well, first thing I do is a substitution to get rid of the two sigma squared. Since we're not interested in the actual number, okay, we won't worry about how we substitute. We're just gonna go right from here. Now, we integrate from zero to infinity to get this area. So we'll substitute u equals t squared. So du equals 2t dt, or dt equals du over 2t. So we'll have one half integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus u du. That we know how to do. So we're gonna get a one half, which is finite. So this area is finite, which means this area is finite, and they're gonna cancel out. So the mean of our distribution is equal to mu. Finally, we show that the variance of our distribution is sigma squared. So take our density function, we multiply by x minus the mean squared, and then we integrate over the real line. Now, our integrand is always positive, so we won't have the cancellation problem like we did with the mean. Put in for f of x, I do the substitution from before, y equals x minus mu, and that gets us to this integral here. Now, we can solve this integral by integration by parts. So the idea is we're looking for a function to integrate. Normally, we go with the exponential. If I want to integrate this exponential, I'm going to need a y out in front for when we do the substitution. So the way we split things up, I let dv be equal to y e to the minus y squared over 2 sigma squared dy and u is equal to y. Okay, we take any derivative here to get to minus sigma squared e to the minus y squared over two sigma squared, and then du is just dy. Our recipe for integration by part says, multiply down the diagonal, and then integrate up minus the right-hand column. Then we put in our limits of integration. So what are we looking at here? Okay, we have our constant out in front. We have the diagonal giving us this function here. If I take the limit as we go out to minus infinity and infinity, we go to zero in both directions. Okay, that's because e to the minus y squared decays much faster than y grows. Okay, you can check that with L'Hopital's rule. So that's gonna go to zero. Then over here, for this piece note, if we put the constant back in, we're just integrating against a probability density function, which goes to one. So all we'll be left with is the sigma squared, and that's our variance. Okay, if we take the square root, we get our standard deviation equal to sigma.